Hi, everyone. Dennis Lemoyne, Principal Community Experiences Program Manager here at Anaplan, and welcome to another awesome episode of our Journey podcast series. Today, I am joined by Clarissa. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, I like to always kind of start these things off by saying, how did you get started in the Anaplan ecosystem? You know, it's funny. I started off my career in consulting, Yeah. and I started off in Verisent, actually. I was doing an yeah incentive compensation management. And I decided that I didn't want to just do ICM for the rest of my career. Sure. Uh, and all my friends, I worked at a company called Open Symmetry, and all the guys that were my friends, they were working on Anaplan. And so I just started sitting in on their meetings and joining in with them and learning everything about the Anaplan way when it first came out mm -hmm. and all yep. that. So. Uh, so that's how I got started. I switched over to the Anaplan practice and worked on uh, my first project there, mm -hmm. and that's how I all got started. Oh my gosh, when was that? How many years that ago now? That was six or seven years six ago. Six or seven years ago. Yeah, I was actually doing Verisent and Anaplan at the same time, wow. and it was the newer version of Verisent at the time, so I was <laughs> I was working a lot, and uh, <laughs> I'll say. it was good though. It was a lot of really great experience. Yeah. What happened next with you? Where, where did things start to go? Yeah, so I went from open symmetry i my dad works in aviation yeah. i grew up roller skating through a hangar i you know i spent a lot of time around airplanes <laughs> nice. and so i always kind of had that pull to go towards airline yeah in 2013 i did an internship at southwest airlines nice. in dallas and i loved it so much i almost didn't go back to college <laughs> to finish college really? yeah. yeah yeah i uh i just loved it so much i loved the team uh, it was the leadership training department. That mm -hmm. was what my original degree was in. And somebody was retiring, which is pretty much the only way you get into Southwest, sure. uh, FYI. <laughs> and then we, uh, I said, okay, I'll go back to college, but I want to end up back in Texas. I want to work for an airline. Okay. So after I started learning Anaplan, I applied for a position at American Airlines mm -hmm. on their center of excellence. Yeah. And that was where I went next. So. Went to American Airlines for a couple of years, worked on their tool, uh, where they were working with the whole Atlantic joint business. Wow. So we had American Airlines, British Airways, Iberia, all accessing the same models. Mm -hmm. So it was a little tricky with some of the access and making sure that people couldn't see things they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yep, that's tricky. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So it was fantastic. I I loved working at the airline. That's where I went next. Um, and then COVID hit, as everybody is well aware. Mm. And I ended up taking a package and saying, you know what, I, I love Anaplan. I want to keep doing Anaplan. And I can do Anaplan in a lot of different places. Sure. And there's a ton of need. So, and I didn't want any of my coworkers to get impacted by it. So I was like, okay, I'll go and I'll just see what's out there. Yeah. And then ended up in another center of excellence with DocuSign. Yes. In yeah. a totally different industry, which yeah. was fantastic. So, uh, yeah, so I've got a good mix of consulting and COE experience. Incredible. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, it's that. wild. I mean, and that's what I think is so interesting when I sit down and I chat with folks. It's like everybody kind of comes from a different place, right? Yes. And the industries are, I mean, it's everything. It, it really, Anaplan does touch everything. When, when you're moving through that career as you've been the last couple of years, what sort of was the, like, the grounding thing for you with Anaplan? Like, what, what, what did you keep coming back to, I guess? For me, Anaplan is a tool that you can use for just about anything. Anything that you want to analyze, you can somehow fit it into Anaplan yeah. and get some insights out of it. So for me, that ability to just kind of go through different industries and learn different things, it keeps a career pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, it keeps it pretty flexible as well, especially with the remote work nowadays mm -hmm. and just being able to do work from anywhere and, and keep that flexibility. So that was the big driver for me was just never getting bored. Mm. I didn't want to, and that's, you know, that's part of with consulting, right? You go onto a project, yep. you do the good work, and then you leave, right. right? And so you don't really get too bored. You just mm -hmm. keep going and keep yeah. doing things. And so you can do that any direction. If you want to do that in a consulting role and learn a ton, you can. If you want to do that in a COE and like kind of transition COEs every few years, you can definitely do that. There's plenty of opportunity. I love to hear that. And and I believe you're a certified master. I right? am. Talk to yeah. me about that and what the, the choice to do that and take that exam. Yes. Yeah. So I've been a certified master and planner for four years. So yeah. somebody called me ancient the other day. And that was not <laughs> That's always my nice favorite. to hear, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it's okay. Um, <laughs> 
But um, for me, it was just kind of the next level, right? I'm, I'm always kind of driving for the next level. So, uh, and I had certifications in Verisent when I was working on it. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna get all mm -hmm. those certifications. Um, I had worked a lot and grown a lot at American Airlines. And I was like, all right, time to take this exam. Let's do it. Um, and got it done, passed it, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, and I think that, you know, the Certified Master Annual Planner Program is, it's not just a program where people get that certification and they get a crown on their head and they get to walk around with it, right? Um, the folks that are in the Master Annual Planner Program are always trying to put the crown on the next person's head and really trying to get other folks involved and excited and it doesn't matter where you work or if you're like a customer or a consultant, there's always an opportunity to contribute and to upskill and to be way smarter than we are. So we want that, like we want all of that in the community and we want people to come to us and say, hey, look at this thing that I built because you taught me how to do it or hey, like how do I do this? There's no way I'm gonna be able to figure this out. Yeah. And you definitely will, so. Uh, that's why I, you know, love the Master in Planner Program. I love being part of it. It's, it's not just like a certification that you put your hat on and you're done. It's a continuous just involvement yeah. in the and community. I hear that a lot, Clarissa. I hear that from CMAs and from other folks. And that's, I mean, I think the beauty of community, that's the beauty of the CMA program. I, I wondered if you could just talk to us a little bit about maybe some mentors or some folks that you met along the way that have been impactful for you in your career yeah. plan, yeah. Uh, Rob Marshall would be one of them. Yep. <laughs> so he lives in Dallas, and when I was on American Airlines, he was on helping us. It was such a big project yeah. that we really just kind of needed his insight and support. So uh, Rob Marshall was kind of the first person that I met and knew that there was a much larger career path for me in Anaplan. Uh, and I, it was really funny because I didn't know who he was. And I was like, what are you taught? Like, who are you, first of all? And why are you here doing this? And so it was, you know, it was a lot of fun, like getting to know him and his personality. Um, so he was kind of a first initial mentor. Um, I would say some of the folks that we worked with at Bedford yeah. on the project, um, McKelly was one of them. I don't even know if he was a master in planner. I'm not sure. Uh, but he was pretty influential on uh, the British Airways American Airlines project. Uh, and then Donish Sumar has been a great influence. Uh, and Jared as well. We all know Jared. Sure. Uh, they were Jared Dolich. Jared folks. Dolich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even, they all know. I know. He doesn't, he, he doesn't need a last name. He knows. No, I don't. No, those guys were really cool because when I left DocuSign, I, when I was at Open Symmetry in consulting, I wanted to go independent. That was something that I really wanted to do. Uh, but I didn't feel like I had the experience yet. Mm. I knew that I needed more experience. I needed to really get into a COE and not just step away from a project, but really see what happens when it goes live and how do you do enhancements and how do you manage users and how do you do all those things. And once I left DocuSign, I said, okay, it's time. Like yeah. this is the time. So uh, I talked to those guys and they're just so willing to share. And, and that's just the whole community is like that. So they shared a lot of information and a ton of advice, and I felt really confident going out and just going for it. So, and I feel like everyone in the community is like that. I feel like I was saying words of encouragement to other yeah. people, and people were saying that to me uh, here at the conference. So, I love that. Yeah, it's a nice give and take, right? Yes. I think maybe my last question would be, what's next for you? What's next for yeah. me? Yeah, uh, staying in the Anaplan community is yeah. definitely one. I uh, I think. Continuing down the independent consultant route yeah. is definitely another. Um, when I originally went out as an independent consultant, and this would just be like my advice for anyone in mm -hmm. any situation, but if you think you have something to offer, try it. Try it and just see how it goes. Like my first goal in my business was to stay busy for six months. That was it. It didn't matter how, like I wanted to be doing Anaplan and I wanted to stay busy. It doesn't have to be this like tremendous large goal it can be just getting out there and trying something and going okay that kind of worked like what's going to happen next how am i going to keep doing this how am I going to mm -hmm. keep the momentum things like that um so for me that's really the next phase is keeping the momentum and also looking into like what do i have to offer that's unique and i think for me it's the like passion for training i love working within coes but a lot of times when you're in a COE and you're doing all of the maintenance and you're doing all of the mm. rollovers for monthly and quarterly stuff and you're responding to users, you get really busy and you don't get as many opportunities to mentor younger mm -hmm. folks. 
or uh, folks that are upskilling in Anaplan rather. Yeah. And so it's, it's something that I wanna focus on is really helping upskill COEs and making them more self-sufficient. Um, I love working with learners. I have a training and development background from you know college on into my career because you're always mm -hmm. training people True. if you have something to offer. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I want to focus more on training and focus more on uh, just developing sustainable COEs. I love that. I think we should end right there because sure. it's such a good spot to end. Fantastic. Thank you, Clarissa, for joining us today. And thank you, folks, for tuning in to our latest episode. And you can always see us at community.anaplan.com. Thanks so much.